The Russo of El Kilo Robokido is an upright man, man of accountability and transparency, a good leader. He's an accomplice and a silver, he's a go getter and respecting the law. A great optimist and a man with high hopes who believes that there's nothing one cannot achieve if he firmly applied himself and believed in God. A man who never fails to bear his mind on issues close to his heart and of benefit to his people. A great orator who speaks in parables and the people listens. This is the man many knew as His Royal Majesty, Benjamin Okumagba, JP, and other friendly called him Papa because he was a father figure to all. Thank God that we are the same Lord as my cousin. He was a good friend, a good brother, good confidant of mine, and we did very well. Papa is a man of so many sides that you cannot really just say, uh, this is Papa. Depending on which side you are coming from. And like I said, in the area of education, he's there. How Papa had 21 biological children of his, but Papa trained about 70 something graduates. How many of such people do you have anyway? So I said that if you have about three or four of such persons in a community kingdom or kingdom, you can just imagine how many people will be educated. The man was a colossus. The man we are talking about today, the late. Majesty Chief Benjamin Okumaba of blessed memory, the Orosu of Okerorobo. He was a dogged fighter, a philanthropist, a man that when he set his mind on something, he never quitted. He was dogged, he fought. Now, his life was very eventful. He touched so many lives positively. There were times I, I was uh, confused as to who were his biological children because his house was like a, a holiday resort. As a lover of rural people, he played a pivotal role in the establishment of a scholarship scheme for Olodi Oki and Ikogbadu kindred, families of Okiri Orobo kingdom, which is responsible for the training of several hundreds of children. His Royal Majesty Benjamin Okumagba is again instrumental in the establishment of a pension scheme for the age in Olodi, Oki and Okubado kindred as means of fighting poverty and reducing debts. Thus in him the title of Mr. Integrity as many describe him as a man who loved his people and embraced all. He loved education, he loved his people. He likes to bring his people to himself. You know, for example, how do you think of a man who came about 200 generations? Uh, who some outside the nation too? He trained them. You know, and he did a lot to the family. He bring the family together as much as possible and try to really make them. You know, so these are the things, some of the things he has. I should be the same in last time, particularly on the field of education, who did and so on and so forth. He was training the children of his sisters, brothers, and even with friends. And then he trained them to any level that they are willing to attain educationally. And he does not discriminate between his biological children and the other children. Everybody make their list and then they go to him and then he will take his glasses or bubble and put it on and then he will scrutinize everybody's list 
and approved. The same amount of short money Papa gives to everybody, whether you are a biological child or not. And then we will come to politics. Like I said, he's a man of so many sides. He's, I will call him the liberator of the Waru Rebels. Politically. Papa was buying form for counselorship aspirants or candidates, whether you are a rubber or a jaw, you will pay for their funds and also encourage them to ensure that they win elections. In fact, even the first House of Assembly man that we had in this time, there is late now, or the day is some of you, Papa also contributed financially to his elections. In fact, he gave me the money I won't mention the amount to give to him. So that is apart from you in the area of politics. We also galvanized the Rebel Nation. They brought everybody together to ensure that we have an Rebel government, which he did in the time of Iburi, in the first and second term. I was there when he did this and was raised up by him for the second term in New Valley Hall. I was there. Chief Amori was there. I'm mentioning that name so that you can verify from him if you wish. Then it's hard for the Rebel Nation as a whole. In order for Rebel to have a place that they would call their own, like an headquarter of Rebel. He muted the idea of having a place that would be called the Rebels in the Rebel Nation. Instead of the Rebel people as a nation going to PTI to do their program, he muted the idea of Oyamugi and send industries to see the Agbaro people. Of course, they, are, they obliged the industries which he sent and give the Rebel Nation that big expanse of land that you have in Oyamugi. And then Papa started the building and completed it to where he did it before he left office. Everybody can attest to the fact that there is the robot house to be in a uh, movie. Prior to his emergence as the president general of UPU, what was UPU then? UPU was a dead social cultural organization. That body could then could be described as at that time as a body that was comatose moribund until he, he decided to resuscitate it and he did it very well to the extent that the UPU became an envy of every other social culture of He saw that the rebels were relegated because of lack of leadership and as soon as he got into the position of the youth general, he was able to direct both the social, cultural, and the political activities of the UPU to the extent that every other group around became envious. So, if I had to put it succinctly, the man founded the modern UPU to have died a natural death. Until the man came on board, it therefore means the man was like somebody who saw tomorrow because he positioned the group during the periods he was alive and as a leader to the point that it went beyond Nigeria. He was able to even organize with you outside Nigeria, US, Europe, and everywhere. It became a rallying point for the election of political leaders. He wasn't a politician, but because of his love for his people, because of his concern for quality leadership. From 1999 to 2007, he served as the first president general of the Urubu Progressive Union, and during his tenure, he organized and re the union 
visited all Urubu kingdoms in Nigeria and across Europe and the United States to mobilize Urubu sons and daughters all over the globe for a more united Urubu nation, both in politics and economy. As a visionary leader, he started the construction of the first phase of ultra-modern Urubu cultural center at Uwehumogi, Agbaru on the 7th December 2007 when he successfully handed over as the first democratically elected president general of the union after a successful eight-year term. And many are of the opinion that the shoe he left behind may just be too big to fit into anyone as he stood against injustice even to the point of wrestling with many. He was dogged, relentless and tireless. He was a man who would stop at nothing to gain justice for those victimized. A man is a man of integrity. Integrity is to fault. You know, to serve the authority. Like I said earlier, it's a man that is most accountability to everything. And is quite transparent. And one of the reasons why people, some of them don't like him, is because he always insists on that accountability and transparency. And so people don't like uh, to make uh, to be accountable to their own deeds. So these are the problem with serving the people. You see, as it's uh, opposed to never no transparent. One of the things the late Mona stood for was fighting against injustice. Just the way apartheid was practiced in South Africa, the way apartheid was worse than South Africa. And you could imagine when you have the likes of Benjamin Okumaba with his exposure being treated as a second class citizen in his home town. He comforted it. He comforted it. And I'll give you instances. I'll give you instances. There was a time in the history of war. The occurred of villages, even the, the other Kidra communities that Baza was over, they were not even allowed to participate in the political activity of the local government. That's part of the fact that there were records to show that these people are also co owners of the place. The marginalization was the worst in the political history of any ethnic group. But, like I told you earlier on, He's a very, very good fighter. He never beat it by one difficult. He saw it and he decided to confront it headlong. And today, what we enjoy today, both the robots and non robots in Wally, was to his credit. He believes in justice. He's a man of very high repute. He believes in fairness. And that is where people misconstrued him. You know, when somebody believes in justice, and is fighting for that justice. You have so many enemies, mostly from those who want to play psychophancy and the rest. Papa doesn't sit on the fence. He tells you the truth, the way it is. He was awarded the prestigious national honor of the Officer of the Order of Niger, OON, on December 2005 by the Federal Republic of Nigeria for his selfless contribution to the peace, unity and development of his people. He has won several awards in Nigeria and in diaspora. His Majesty Benjamin Okumagba was a wonderful husband and father. He was a father to all Urubu sons and daughters. He was indeed a famous Urubu leader who distinguished himself in Urubu nationalism for over 50 years. Urubu, 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 Urubu,